You talk about the combined content spend of this company, which will be large. It'll be over $20 billion, as David has said as well. But does it have to be even larger? Will it have to go up substantially from there to compete in the way that you're describing? Well, it, it really depends on, on, the, on the margin, what spending that incremental content dollar can generate in terms of either marketing positioning or uh, consumer satisfaction. And I, that's why I think that we're going to end up with an ensemble of services. I don't think it's going to be one size fits all, mm -hmm. either domestically or internationally. I believe that, that uh, uh, people with a lesser budget uh, are going to be inclined to want some advertising subsidy and to take a subset or perhaps a delay in availability of the best stuff, okay? Right. The people who want premier service uh, and no advertising, you know, will be paying for it. Right. Um, does that increase marketing costs, though, without having it sort of be a unified service or, or, or not? Okay. Well, here's, here's one of the real benefits of the, of the tie-in between Discovery and Time Warner. Discovery already has a massive video presence around the world. Right. So the ability to promote and advertise uh, and introduce a new product or service uh, from Time Warner... Uh, internationally is going to get a huge leg up by the cross-promotion capabilities that exist in this combination with Discovery. So you think there are revenue synergies, is what it sounds like? Oh, I think there's enormous revenue synergies, particularly international. Mm -hmm. So far beyond the $3 billion in cost synergies. I mean, revenue synergies are hard to quantify. You don't know them until I guess you see them, right? Exactly so. And, and it's hard to predict. But, you know, all you have to do is look at, uh, at the revenue growth okay, in discovery in the first quarter just from the launching of D+, which, you know, is, is not blockbuster. It's personality. It's great entertainment. But it's not the kind of acquisition type content that Time Warner can bring to the table. So you have to look at this game both from a getting people to reach in their wallet and pull out their credit card point of view, the marketing point of view, but you also have to look at the churn and the satisfaction of the consumer. Discovery does very well on the customer satisfaction, but it doesn't have the Wonder Woman type of uh, big event content that will get you an acquisition program where you can, you can add, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of, of consumers in yeah. one campaign. You know, speaking of Wonder Woman, though, John, I mean, and back to the $3 billion cost synergy number, I mean, running these studios, which obviously David hasn't done, is pretty expensive. You know, you got, what, you got unions, you've got, uh, you know, agencies, lawyers, producers, I mean... A lot of people taking a bite at the apple. You're still confident that they can cut costs there or that there are enough costs to be cut in other places to, to reach that $3 billion number, despite what, again, our studios being very expensive to run? Well, that's a great question for David, and I don't want to step on David, but I don't believe he's looking at cutting costs there at all. Okay. Uh, he's, he's looking for efficiencies elsewhere in, in, uh, in the distribution of, of the platform. Uh, you know, overhead, uh, administrative, uh, the fact that Discovery already exists in every corner of the planet, and therefore you don't have to duplicate that. Right. Uh, so there, there's a lot of other. I, I don't think David is naive about <laughs> about the cost of producing big-ticket blockbuster events. We tend, however, to see those more as customer acquisition tools, mm -hmm. okay? And you amortize those across the, the growth that you get as you use them that way. And I think it's this blend of packaging and pricing and promotion with, with high-revenue advertising interspersed uh, uh, in a non-objectionable way 
that we're learning. And in fact, I think this is what you're really seeing in your own company with Peacock. Right. Where you're seeing a combination of, of free ads, ad supported and premium with and without ads, but with light ads. Uh, and what kind of revenue potential uh, and entertainment and stickiness that represents uh, for content owners uh, to exploit, to monetize. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.